Hey everyone, today I'm going to be making bleach using just a salt solution, an ACL, just the table salt that you buy in the store, water and electricity can make bleach. So there's a few videos of people doing this on the internet, I don't think any of them are particularly good, but recently a video came out by The Big Clive, which I'll link in the description. He does teardowns of electronics and his most recent video was tearing down a sprayer bottle that turns a salt solution into bleach using electrolysis. Sometimes he reviews things that make ridiculous claims, so I was instantly drawn in to something like this, and when I discovered it was something that actually works, I thought it was even more interesting and fascinating. So I wanted to try it myself. The second source that I looked at was an article published through the Journal of American Public Health. It was probably published in like 1920s or 1930s. I'll link that in the description below. But what I found from that is they were trying to justify making bleach with electrolysis rather than with traditional chemistry. And there were some good tidbits in there. One of the things that they found was at the time it was definitely more expensive to use electrolysis than just traditional chemistry. But they gave some really good details on what sort of reactions are going on. From that article, I also found that a 10% salt solution was ideal. Keeping the temperature down is really important because at, I believe, 60 degrees C, the bleach begins to decompose much faster. They also cited that there's a minimum voltage in order to get this reaction to happen. And so the voltage that they used to overcome this minimum voltage by a wide margin was 4.5 volt. So the first thing that I did is I took my adorable 10 milliliter beaker, I weighed out one gram of salt and topped the rest off with water to make a roughly 10% salt solution. You know, precision probably isn't completely necessary in this sort of reaction. The other thing that I had to do was actually find my electrodes. So, you know, I could use copper electrodes. I tried using copper electrodes. It didn't turn out very well. It was a mess. There's just so many side reactions that can go on. I ended up with this sort of disgusting sludge. The electrodes from that experiment were kind of interesting too. One of them was a much shinier copper and one was a very dull copper. If you know the exact chemistry that's going on here, let me know in the comments below. That'd be really cool to find out. The first experiment that I did actually wasn't with the copper electrodes. I actually salvaged some graphite from some pencil lead. Uh, I just chopped apart a pencil, got the lead out. You know, this gives you a really small electrode, but it does work. I've also seen people using like lantern batteries, like taking apart lantern batteries and getting carbon electrodes from that. Um, if that's what boats your float, then, then you do you. But I think for this experiment, just the pencil leads were fine just to sort of prove a point here. I also happen to have a halfway decent power supply now. So I was able to pretty precisely control what voltage was getting to this cell. So in my first experiment with the 10 milliliter beaker and the graphite pencil lead, electrodes, I got some pretty good reaction going on. I only let the reaction go for about a minute or two because it was in my room and I didn't really want to be breathing in chlorine gas. I also couldn't resist the urge to uh, light it on fire because you're producing hydroxy gas here, which is just hydrogen and oxygen. You know, the water is splitting in this reaction as well. So you get the hydrogen and oxygen as well as some chlorine vapor coming off of the solution. And one of the things that I thought was interesting from this is that I got a very red flame, which indicates a presence of the sodium metal. Even after running the electrolytic cell just for a couple of minutes, I got a very low pH. This was likely because one of the first products to form is sodium hydroxide, which is a pretty strong base. So the second experiment that I tried was actually trying to use graphite from artists' charcoal pencils. Uh, don't do that. The charcoal is really porous and really, really brittle. So it just completely deteriorated when I tried to clamp anything to it. It was really a pain. I do not recommend it. Uh, I then tried using some copper electrodes. We know how that turned out. It was a sludgy mess and it was just nasty. Then finally, I decided to go back to the original pencil lead electrodes, which worked so well in the beginning. And I just wanted to run this experiment longer to see how low I could get this pH to get. The second sort of test to see what product I was getting here is I actually wanted to bleach a piece of cloth. So that was my second goal. My first goal was to get a very low pH see if we could get there. And then if we could also bleach a dyed piece of clothing, I'd be super happy 
and pretty convinced that I was making bleach here. So then finally, for my final experiment, I let the adorable little 10 milliliter beaker run for about three hours probably, and it was producing a lot of bubbles, drawing about 300 milliamps for that entire time period without any stirring. The pH got really low at the peak. It got to around maybe 13 and a half, which I think is really impressive just for an electrolysis cell. I did try bleaching a piece of fabric, but really what I found is that the pH paper would be bleached after maybe five minutes. So I'd put the pH paper in, it would turn a really, really dark purple. And then if I let it sit for maybe five or 10 minutes, it would completely bleach that section of the paper. So I'm pretty convinced that I made bleach here just in this tiny volume and tiny time window. Of course, if this reaction was scaled up and done properly with more current and bigger electrodes and more solution, then you could presumably make enough bleach to use either for arts and crafts or sterilization when you're say, I don't know, in a pandemic where you can't buy bleach. I think the bleach that I made really wasn't that concentrated because when I tried dyeing a piece of fabric, it sort of changed color a little bit. You know, maybe different fabrics are susceptible to different amounts of bleach, or maybe I needed to soak the fabric in the bleach for a certain amount of time. I'm not really sure. I was pretty convinced since the pH paper was bleached. So what exactly is going on here? First, we need to know our end product. Our end product that we're shooting for is, of course, bleach, which is sodium hypochlorite. And you already can probably imagine that we have all of the ions floating around already. So sodium hypochlorite is just a sodium ion and a chloride ion. And the chloride ion is just a chlorine and an oxygen. We already have all these ions floating in our solution. So at one of the electrodes, we're producing hydrogen, and then at the other electrode, we're producing oxygen. That's just the simple electrolysis reaction. And since we have salt in the solution as well, we have sodium and chlorine ions floating around. So electrochemistry is <laughs> really tricky, especially with all of the different naming conventions, because you know current flows in one direction and electrons flow in a different direction. So electricians call the cathode and anode one thing and electrochemists typically call them the opposite. So, you know, not gonna talk about it specifically what's going on at each half cell, but at one pole, of course, you're making hydrogen, one pole you're making oxygen. So when the water molecule splits effectively, you have hydrogen ions and you also have hydroxide ions. You always have hydroxide ions in water, but in this case, you have a lot more hydroxide ions, and those hydroxide ions are gonna combine with the sodium ions to, like I said before, make sodium hydroxide. This sodium hydroxide then combines with a chloride ion in order to finally make our product bleach, sodium hypochlorite. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. I thought this was a cool little experiment that you can do at home. I don't know if you're a prepper or something and you care about making sanitizing solution when the world ends or something or you're just generally curious in the chemistry i hope you found it interesting i hope you found it useful let me know if you have suggestions for future videos in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video see ya